come Witch Queen, there will be a number of changes and challenges that the player base will come up against and will need to be prepared for, whether in builds or load that we used. With that, we then get Void 2.0 that will enhance our current list of abilities to further reach out and expand our list of builds to be used. And while all this will be keeping players wide awake, it's always wise to have a single Jack of all trades setup that will cover all content no matter what you have equipped it. So today, I want to break down one of the best solo Jack of all trade builds for the Warlock that you can instantly put on and cover whatever comes your way. Now, using Lunification Boots and Well of Radiance with a high intellect stat, this setup is designed for supporting solo players with quick and high DPS while also providing the necessary protection to help teams and keep you afloat. If you ever want to do a solo flawless dungeon while being safe and efficient as possible, or if you ever need a build that covers your day to day task, then this build is definitely for you as it has everything you'll need in one simple boot. Now before we head in, a word from our sponsor, AOA.com offers discounted silver for Destiny 2 users and players alike. Use my code to get 3% off. Also, if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like on the sub as it really does help me out. For the subclass, we'll be using the Tomb of Grace for the Well of Radiance Super, and then its supportive abilities that can also provide extra protection towards the user or if we're in a team. The focus of the build is to become a Jack of All Trades setup so that it's designed no matter where you are in game, you always have a build that can adapt to change. Now, this is important to keep in mind with the ever expanding mods that Bungie releases over time, as you're not going to always stick with just one set from start to finish. Sometimes you're going to need to opt into switching up your items so you can play a specific role that may come through. And although that's more of a likely case if you play in raids, there is a possibility that such an event could appear in other settings. So to prepare us for such a matter, we'll be using the Well of Radiance and the subclass in general for the quick and protective nature it offers. For a well, we'll want to have at least a 90 to 100 intellect stat as we won't have that much abilities available to proc easily gain super available. Now we do have hands on, but that was only added as I had free space to slot it in. Ashes to Ashes is a really good alternative instead, especially if you plan to use fireball grenades with a relatively fast cooldown within teams. From here, you then want to make sure the rest of your stats come to around 50 to 60, as stats such as Discipline and Recovery for the Warlock will be covered by Guiding Flames, Benevolent Dawn, and Divine Protection. We can further aid this area by adding on the Distribution perk, and from here, this is all you really need to cover this subclass aspect of the build. Now, as I said, the build is pretty simple in its needs, as because of this, you'll be able to get into any content you like, knowing that you're already covered. The Lunification Boots will be increasing your reload speed dramatically, which will be important once the new raid comes and DPS will be needed to put a dent into whatever boss you face. With that being said, we'll also need to attach the appropriate weaponry to keep you going as well. I take my primary, which is the Chroma Rush with Feed and Frenzy and Wellspring, a great weapon with an even greater pair of stats and perk pool to pick. I believe this weapon and a number of other weapons will be going come Witch Queen so now is a great time to try and get as many rolls as you can and stock up on them before they go for good. This roll specifically is great as it offers me a fast reload speed and on top of that it also allows users to use the Wellspring perk which is perfect for gathering extra energy when you need it most so ideal for this endgame build. Now please do know it's not a lot of energy you get from this perk, but it's a substantial amount that you'll need to get to keep getting kills with the weapon to get a good amount back. Now if this sounds like too much work for you, then alternatively, the Hung Jury is a perfect scout to use for next season with his wide pool of perks to offer, including Wellspring itself, or better off the Explosive Payload. A secondary wise, we have the Cartesian Coordinates with Under Pressure and Vorpal, and this is one of the most easiest and effective fusions you'll want to get for quick DPS within seconds. Against bosses, we can be hitting around 3-4k per shot landed and with particle deconstruction applied means this damage is only going to be getting more and more nastier by the seconds. Now you will need a lot of ammo to keep the DPS going so having a fusion rifle ammo finder, fusion reserves and fusion scavenger mod will help you out a lot down the line. I have paired this up with Sleeper Simulant as both of these in hand can easily one phase the new bosses if you and your team use the same setup as shown, or you can take out around half of a boss's health if you do this solo. Now depending on what the next season offers, this setup may change to keep up with the meta since parkour deconstruction will be taken out. Good thing though is that fusions are still just as viable even without the mod attached, 
and on top of that the board is designed with keeping up with the meta, so if rockets become a thing next season, then I can just opt in to using the Gallowhorn and go my merry way from there. Now moving on to the stats section, you should be aiming for 60 to 80 for discipline, as remember earlier, we have a lot of buffs going our way, which will instantly recharge us, but keeping this at 60 is the most feasible level to go for while achieving a substantial amount of energy your way. From here, you then want to focus your energy onto recovery at 50 to 70, so you can make use of your rifts, but also the benevolent dawn perk that's all around going to be giving you a number of buffs when your team stand in them. Now, although we have ours low, the subclass is pretty flexible in offering a lot of energy to get this one stat back up in seconds. So, while recovery is low, which means we could easily be in danger a number of times, I've applied the protective light mod for an additional level of protection for the user. We also have Well of Life, which will provide us an increased amount of regeneration the moment we pick up well. And then we have the Healthy Finisher mod, which is designed for giving us back health from finishers, with the trade off being one tenth of a super has to be given, which is honestly low. This should, in theory, allow you to maintain health at all levels of content as long as you manage to proc the necessary requirements. One thing to note is that the upcoming changes to charge light mods and how they may be reworked to play differently than they are currently. Depending on how good or bad the change may be, using the elemental charge mods may be more beneficial if they are designed so that users use elemental worlds more often. Now, this is why in the build I have elemental armor's mod and want the might mod there to further help us when needed, but also in case a major change occurs. We can use the current template how it is, and simply just opt in the new pieces when the time comes. Having said that, let's take a look at all the mods compiled into one so you know what to aim for. For head we have discipline, hands on, fusion rifle finder and front of might mod, arm we have intellect and taking charge mod, chest we have intellect, cocker's of damage times 2, and protective light mod, leg with intellect, a fusion rifle scavenger, and elemental armaments mod, bond we have discipline, healthy finisher, distribution, and well of life mod. As we have little time before Witch Queen to come around, now is a great time to put the following build together and get out as many endgame certified content completed before they disappear or something new comes along to take priority on. Now, similar to the Phoenix Protocol build, you have plenty of opportunity to become an unstoppable force of nature with this build in mind. Not only are you getting a constant damage buff if you're using the correct element of the match, but your super, thanks to the subclass change, will be passively coming back to you at a very fast rate, something that is easily achievable by all players if you have a good intellect armor set. The build covers a wide number of areas for users to use and expand in, while also offering the user to build the following setup how they like. Like mentioned before, we can swap out our weapons, perks and mods for whatever seasonal meta is put in place while not needing to change the core facts of the build. So as you can see, the build is ready for all types of content in mind and making them very adaptable to all situations. And from there, when it comes to damage, you're pretty much ready to fight whatever abomination comes your way, as your super is going to be giving you that extra bonus damage, Font of Might will be stacking more damage if you have a solar weapon equipped it, and Lunification Boots giving you that sweet reload speed so you can out DPS the boss before they even get a major hit on you. Take the end boss for the new dungeon, I was hitting around 30 for lowest damage to 70 or 100k plus with the Sleeper and Cartesian combined, and this is with or without the Parkour Deconstruction mod applied. Now, I wanted to make sure the build was sustainable outside the user to follow the mod since it will be going away soon and we don't know what might take its place. But if I have to guess, it's probably going to be something in rocket space. And with all of this, I found to actually really like the build, as it requires little from you to succeed in, as a great match with the well of radio subclasses since it's something that everyone's familiar with. Just like the Phoenix build, it's up there with providing support to the user and groups with ease and fits into whatever scenario the group will need you in. You have so many ways to customize your build that no matter what you have in mind, the build can adapt to this with little pressure. It can definitely be better though, and down the line I do plan to revisit it once the next season is out. But for now, this will be my go-to build for the new content and probably the raid as well. Something simple and yet sweet to use. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.